Hello and welcome to week seven of the class. We're moving along really quickly and uh, that's a good thing. What I want to do is I'm starting out at your home page, so you can just click on week seven and we'll come to what we are doing. Let me make this a tiny bit bigger. This week, what we are doing is we have a reading assignment, Why America is Self-Segregating. There will be a discussion board about that and a summary. That's the bulk of the work. At the same time, we're looking at reading a section on logic. Logic is an important part of understanding and breaking down arguments. And so what we've done is we have read a couple of editorials um, about our topics. And now you can start thinking back, well, what is a logical argument? What is not a logical argument? And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a, a few minutes. The other thing we need to do is look at our peer review reflection. So you should be able to go into, I will put a link real quick. Uh, you should go into the book review assignment. I'm just gonna create this really quick while we are here. So we'll go to the peer mark assignment. And that's gonna be down at the bottom, but it's gonna move up. You'll scroll down here and you need to click on the view complete and then you'll be able to read your feedback. If you have problems with that, please let me know. I do apologize for some of the problems with, with Turnitin. They've kind of done a few updates on some things. So it makes it a little bit harder for things to always work, but uh, technology, what can we do, right? Um, I also have some book review samples. What I'll probably do later this week is I will go through maybe one of our book reviews and just talk about it uh, because there are always several common things that go on with book reviews. First is that in week four, I posted right here some tips about writing summaries, but it's also useful for talking about our books. You're summarizing, they called us enemy you are putting that in um, italics, not quotations. I have the works cited entry right here. So if of you did not use that so far. Um, so make sure you're using this. This is the appropriate way to do it. Some of you have added the city, which is uh, the older version. It's not necessary anymore. I don't know why, but MLA is always changing. But if you have questions about formatting, things like that, how to cap do a title, um, do a website name, things like that. Go into week four, um, or you can install an MLA handbook. But other things that are going on in the book review is that, as always, I get a lot of book reports. And that's just a habit. It's difficult. We've never written a book review before. So what we need to make sure that we're doing is focusing on evaluating the book. We should know within that first paragraph whether or not uh, you are recommending the book, whether you think it's good or not, and what makes you think it's good or worth reading. That is going to keep your reader interested and also set it up as a book review. If all you do is describe the book for three pages and then have a single paragraph at the end that says you liked it, that's very boring. Um, you wouldn't ask someone if they liked a movie and they just described the plot to you. You wouldn't like it if you asked somebody if they enjoyed their meal at this restaurant and they detailed every single event that happened from sitting down until paying the bill, but didn't say the food was good. It's important that you are focusing on the book. What makes it good? Is it the illustrations? How do the illustrations help shape the book? Is it the story? Are you bothered by the politics? Why might that be? And then the next step is to think about what readers might want. If a reader is looking for history, it's not a history book, right? But they're gonna get some history. If the reader's looking for fun and excitement, they're not gonna get that. The reader's looking for humor because they know of George Takai from the memes. They're not gonna get a lot of humor. So what would readers expect? How should they start to think about the political messages towards the end? It shouldn't really be a surprise because the entire book is based on a political decision. Uh, 
and how it impacted people. That's the important thing to consider. Uh, we have read from our, our readings, the Sean Blanda, The Other Side is Not Dumb, how we tend to other people. We make them a, a, a group that's easy to discriminate against and easy to kind of uh, set up straw man arguments. Those are some things you're gonna see in our discussion on logic. Right here, I'll probably pull that up. But um, most important things because that short-sighted thinking allows us to say, well, yes, the, these people, we were at war with the Japanese people and they were Japanese people. But if we would have flipped things around, say, okay, well, why is that okay? We did, did we have camps for people of German descent? I'm a German descent, I mean, I mean about a hundred years before the war started, but should I have gone into a camp? Should I have had to, actually I wasn't born then, but should my grandparents and my parents have, have had to do that? What makes it fair? What makes it not fair? What is rational and what is irrational? Those are questions that we have to start to think about when we analyze this book and how do we digest the end? And we should think about that a lot. Um, Let's see, moving on, we will talk a little bit about logical fallacies. There's a, a lovely little chart uh, from this website uh, and it has all these different types of fallacies. The reading and the critical thinking handbook, when you open this up and you go to chapter four, logical fallacies. Um, I'm sorry to be just scrolling down really, really quickly like this, but logical fallacies. I'm sorry, it's way down here. They're, they're good to understand. They might have different names. So the idea is that, well, a logical fallacy is short thinking. It's short circuited thinking. I'll just say it cuts to the chase to the different parts. So it draws conclusions. So like ad hominem, you're discrediting someone's argument by attacking their character, right? And it has an example. Similarly, our thou shalt not commit logical fallacies has the same sort of Thing. So it does have ad hominem and it has an example right here after Sally presents an eloquent and compelling case for equitable taxation systems. Sam asks the audience whether we should believe anything from a woman who isn't married, wants arrested and smells a bit weird, right? So it gets a little, you know, off the point, but that's, that's the idea. And ad hominem says, well, you smell funny. Why should I believe you? What does that have to do with anything? So I really want you to take, take, take a look at these and see maybe what fallacies are occurring in the arguments that are being made, but also start thinking about how logic and logical fallacies happen in your everyday lives. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that'll be an interesting thing. Um, I'm asking you to look back to those banned topics. Uh, many of these topics rely on logical fallacies. It's not because they're not earnest arguments, but to connect the dots is an important issue. How do we get from this idea all the way over here? And most people just take the shortcut. They don't really explain all the steps. And that's also what stasis theory has us do. So I'm presenting you some very valuable steps and I don't expect you to really use them or even fully appreciate them right now, but these are valuable steps to really thinking a lot deeper about your topic and the arguments you want to make. So we'll try to come back to those later on, but that is where we are. Final note I want to make is that I've moved the book review back one week to give you an additional time. A lot of you have some serious revisions to make. It's not a bad thing. It's a good opportunity. So uh, let me think. Yeah, we have an extra week. I will have my feedback to you. By the middle of this week, I ha I'm halfway done and I'll crank the rest of those out in these next two days. So hopefully Wednesday, all that will be done. And then I can start looking at some other things uh, like your stasis theory stuff. And I will be putting you in groups. The group work um, will be helpful. And I'll explain that next week once we're in groups. So that's where we are. Have a great week. Be sure to email me with any questions. You're doing a great job with that so far. So thank you. <laughs>